What's up guys, here's my prediction for Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Anthony Joshua 2. Two of the best heavyweights in the world clashing again in their primes, 30 years old each. And we finally get to find out who is right. Are the fans that are saying that Andy Ruiz just has Joshua's number, are they correct? Or are the fans that are saying Anthony Joshua just made many mistakes and he can win the next one? Are they correct? Well, here's the thing coming to this fight. As we know, Andy Ruiz is 6'2 and he has a 74 inch reach. Anthony Joshua is 6'6", 82 inch reach. He's going to have that kind of advantage, again, to work behind a jab, to keep the long range, to stay on the outside, use the movement, because Joshua has many attributes that a lot of boxers don't have. He has pretty much everything besides, I don't think you can say he has an iron chin or anything like that. I think he has a, like a decent, normal chin where heavyweights can crack it and hurt it. He seems to have good heart, especially looking at that Klitschko fight. And he did go multiple times when he fought Andrew Ruiz the first time. So I believe he does have heart. He does have the will to fight. The chin, not so much. And the other thing he's lacking, I would say, is cardio. He has the power. He's fast with his hands, fast with his movement, good eyesight, high fight IQ. He has the height. He has the reach, the athleticism. He can adapt very well. He has a lot going for him that a lot of boxers don't have. But Ruiz is going to have that cardio advantage. And he has that granite chin and the ability to recover even if he gets hurt. So he has those aspects that Joshua does not have. When you saw the first fight, Andy Ruiz got knocked down first, got up and recovered right away. He got caught by some big shots as well, a right straight after that knockdown, and ate the punch and kept going forward. When Joshua gets caught, he gets hurt every time. So we know in the rematch, if Joshua gets caught again by anything big from Ruiz, he's going to get hurt. And historically, Joshua doesn't recover that quickly. When he gets hurt, he needs a couple rounds to get into the swing of things again. But Ruiz just needs a couple seconds. He needs, you know, 8 seconds, 10 seconds, and then he's back into the fight in prime form. If not that, he's actually even more intense coming at his opponent to land the big shot and get back at them. And Ruiz is very technical in the pocket, right? He's not going to do anything crazy. Even after he knocked down Joshua, he kept things very technical, stuck to the game plan. But he picked up the pace and picked up the tempo in everything he was doing, which was excellent to keep Joshua on edge and exploit his defense. Now, Joshua, for the first two rounds, he was doing very well. He was doing exactly what he needed to do, staying behind a jab keeping the range, moving around, and just kept it almost like a point fight. But then things changed once he threw that right straight in the third round, right? So he kept a very good game plan going. He won the first two rounds, and then he threw the right straight at Andy Ruiz. And he followed his way in to get in close. This is something that Joshua does a lot in his fights. He likes to create damage and get knocked down, hurt his opponent when he gets in close. You normally don't see him hurting opponents from the far range, usually, right? A lot of his knockdowns, a lot of his damage happens in the close range, which is crazy to think about when he has an 82 inch reach and staying six foot six. So that formula blending with Andy Ruiz's inside boxing savagery blocks off Joshua's attempt to create a lot of damage and be successful continuously as the fight progresses with Andy Ruiz. Yes, he can knock down Ruiz one time when Ruiz doesn't really expect it, but if he keeps Keeps getting in close range, Ruiz is going to get the hang of it and use what he's been working with for his entire career. But why did Joshua do that? Why did he change in the third round? Why did he go from sticking on the outside, using the jab, being elusive, to get into Andy Ruiz's face and try to box him up and knock him out? Well, we have to know that Deontay Wilder before knocked out Dominic Brazil in the first round in dramatic fashion. And a lot of fans were expecting Joshua to do something similar, have some spectacular finish against the tough Andy Ruiz, right? And Joshua has said this before himself. He said he wanted a spectacular finish of great performance against Andy Ruiz. And it backfired. Because when he threw that right straight and chased down, and he did land the left hook in the pocket, which caught Ruiz, he saw Ruiz was hurt, and he looked at the finish. He wanted to knock out Andy Ruiz. But here's the thing. Andy Ruiz Jr. is not the kind of guy that you can chase a knockout, look for the knockout on, and be successful. Not only is he like the Mexican Wolverine where he can just take your shots, he recovers instantly, and doesn't back down. People undermine his technical boxing in the close range. Yeah, from outside, he has a hard time getting in on his opponent. So what he does is he keeps a shell up, high defense, high guard, and looking to counter you once you get on the inside. And this is exactly what happened again. So Joshua throwing those short hooks that he always catches opponents with to knock him out with, he's trying to finish Andy Ruiz. And Ruiz is able to roll with the punches, weave very well, and find that big left hook and eventually end it with right overhand behind the ear. And Anthony Joshua was never able to recover. So we know Andy Ruiz has that kind of power. One big shot and Joshua is going to be hurt probably for the whole duration of the fight. And a big thing is, yes, a lot of times one big punch 
isn't enough to completely discombobulate the opponent for the entire fight, but it's when the combinations get chained up. And that is something Ruiz brings into a fight that a lot of heavyweights do not. It's because of his fast trunk movement, drastic movement with his hips, that he's deceptively able to get away from your shots and roll with the punches. And once that left hook comes at you, the punches do not end. It's a storm, a rain of punches that Joshua just cannot see through. And just continuously in the fight got overwhelmed, right? If you come at Andy Ruiz in the pocket like that, it's almost running to a buzzsaw. And another big thing to know about Anthony Joshua is he lowers his left hand after he throws it a lot, right? His right hand, he keeps it up there. But his left hand, for some reason, when he throws a left hook, when he throws a jab from a distance, he's always dropping his hand. And that's what's going to allow Andy Ruiz to land the overhand right over the top and potentially start up his combinations again, right? People underestimate Andy Ruiz's technique. Even in the seventh round, the first knockdown that happened, Ruiz is able to see the punches so well. He saw the left hook of Joshua coming at him, so what he does is he rolls with the punch and throws the overhand right in one smooth action. So he's being defensive as he's rolling with the punch, and he's also being offensive when he's throwing the right overhand and when this is going on, Joshua has no way to defend himself. He's throwing a big shot on the left side. The only thing he can kind of do is mimic what Andy Ruiz is doing and move his head with the right hand. But he's the one initiating the attack, so he doesn't see this coming, right? He's expected to land on Andy Ruiz and hurt him. Ruiz sees the punch and knows what to do afterward or at the same time, and that is attacking Joshua over the opening he created on himself. And when this happens, the rain of punches go on again, and Joshua just cannot weather the storm. So another thing we know is, in the fire, when the both of them are exchanging on each other, Joshua is not able to react to the punches or take the same kind of shots and follow up with something defensively or offensively the same way Andrew Ruiz can. If he gets hit or the punches just rain down on him, he seems to get a little bit more lost. So what this all tells you is, the close range should not be initiated from Joshua at all and should be initiated for Andy Ruiz. And what has to happen is Joshua has to adjust his game plan just a little bit. Slight adjustments to just stick on the outside. Do what he did in those first two rounds and keep that going on for the entire fight. Staying behind a jab, moving with the feet, moving away from any lunging punch from Ruiz, and then circle his way back into the center. Don't try to punish too much and look for the knockout. Yes, a straight right hand counter is very well, but you want to move away as you're doing it. This is the kind of game plan that Joshua has to go by if he wants to be super successful against Andrew Ruiz. But Ruiz can do a couple things different as well. He can go to the body to open up the head or chase the feet, follow the pattern, get to the body, and this gets him in range to potentially either counter Joshua's intercepting punches, right? If Ruiz is going to the body from a distance, jabbing his way in, Joshua might want to just intercept him to get him away. This is another way Ruiz can counter over the top and see an opening. Or if Joshua doesn't throw anything and he's just trying to move away, Ruiz can chase the body again. So jab to the body, pick up the hands right away, look for the offense of Joshua, if nothing comes his way, go to the left hook to the liver or something like that because you want to work the cardio of Joshua. Joshua has a cardio discrepancy and Ruiz can take advantage of that if the headshots are not coming his way. Ruiz does not need to get a knockout. He doesn't need to chase the head. He knows that as the fight continues, he's going to be favored. So work in the body if nothing opens up in the head. That can be another big thing that he did not go for in the first fight. It's going to require a little bit more footwork and, and Ruiz doesn't go that way. You know, Ruiz is a lot more plodding. He's like a tank marching you down. This can go to Joshua's game plan favor of just keeping behind a jab and moving away. And this is why Ruiz has to expect that. He doesn't want to expect Joshua to come the same way he did in the first fight because we all know Joshua's going to get in trouble again. So Ruiz has to also make a couple adjustments and find more openings, find more ways to expose Joshua than he did before. So that goes to my prediction for this fight. It's so difficult to call. Because I do believe Anthony Joshua should be able to win. I do think he has the kind of approach and the intelligence to change things just a little bit and find a way to win in a point fight. Don't try to find that spectacular knockout. Just win the fight. And if he just goes by that mentality, I think Joshua can win. But when you look at the interviews and see how they're talking and everything like that, especially the face-off when they saw each other and gave their thoughts about each other, Ruiz seems so confident. He seems so sure of himself and so sure how this fight's going to go. Joshua seems a little bit confused or on edge or just like hesitant about something. Like something's in his mind that's blockading something. And I don't know what it is, but I am going to go with Andy Ruiz Jr. in this one. Not only is the confidence thing a big factor, but Joshua has been fighting the same for a very long time. Now, he's not as experienced as Ruiz is. But he's been doing the kind of thing every single fight. And I believe eventually in this fight, he's going to try to get on the inside and hurt Ruiz. It's just in his nature. He does it every single fight. I believe how this fight's going to turn out is, I think Joshua's going to stick to that game plan, stay on the outside, and win maybe the first four or five rounds. But I think he's going to get caught again as Ruiz opens up. Joshua throws some ill-advised left hook or something like that, opens himself up. 
and Ruiz catches him and drops him in that round and gets 10-8. And I don't see Joshua recovering that well afterward. Now, I know a lot of speculation from the first fight is Joshua got knocked out in sparring. And there's speculation in this fight or conspiracy theories that Joshua got knocked out again in sparring in preparation for this one. So potentially it could be the same or not. If it happened or not, I don't think Josh is going to be able to recover with the kind of combination punching that Ruiz brings to him. Ruiz will not let you breathe after you get hurt. He doesn't let you just walk off, right? He's going to put the pressure on you. He marches you down and looks for those punches again, looks to counter you. And even in the first fight after Joshua got hurt, he tried to stay a little bit more tentative and stay on the outside and jab his way to a victory again. But he started losing the rounds because he was way too hesitant. Not even throwing anything and Ruiz was just marching him down and winning by just lunging forward, landing a left hook here and there and stuff like that. So after the first knockdown in this rematch, I believe, Ruiz is going to win majority of the fight afterward and knock him down again in the 10th or 11th round. And I will say that Andrew Ruiz wins a decision through that. I can see a 10th or 11th TKO. No, I do find it a little bit alarming that they're going to have Anthony Joshua as like a 2 or even a 3 to 1 favorite going to a rematch I would say if he's going to be the favorite like a minus 150 like a one and a half to one favorite something like that three to one that's almost like a blowout right that's like someone should absolutely win the entire fight and that definitely especially with the confidence that Andrew Ruiz is coming to this fight with that alone shouldn't even warrant a minus 200 for Anthony Joshua and he lost the first one people have to remember that he did lose the first fight he can absolutely lose a rematch so I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions and if you did make sure you get a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below what you guys think about this fight who you guys think is going to win and what's going to be next for the winner of this I believe the winner should fight the winner of Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury and get the heavyweight king claimed, right? Who is the heavyweight king? This is the only way we're going to find out. These two are going to fight. Wilder and Fury are going to fight. The winner of those fight each other. We have the best heavyweight of this era. That's the only way we're going to find out. The four horses in the race, only one can win. And that's ultimately the final goal, what we're all expecting later on next year. So I am going to come out with my UFC predictions. It's going to come out tomorrow, so be looking for that. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you then.